How's it going guys? Welcome back to another patch notes video. Today we have the yeah, the combat cleanup strike given from Jagex. So this is going to be a pretty big update I'm pretty sure. So we'll take a little while to go through I think. But that, for anyone who is wondering, this is just going to be the patch notes. There's nothing else in here. I don't want to waste your time. I say this every single every single Monday that I do these. It's just the patch notes. There's nothing else in here. I'm just reading through it. Uh, and it's for the people that don't like to read the patch notes but still want to know what's going on. So uh, other than that if, if it's helpful, if you find this useful, do subscribe. I do this every Monday. Uh, let's Take a look what we've got. So we've got uh, Ninja Strike Combat Cleanup. We're bringing the fight to a fighting tour this week. No, really, this update is all about combat changes. So let's have a look. We've got quality of life for bossing and beyond. The ninjas have gone combat crazy. They've whipped up a host of dramatic quality of life changes for this week's update, and they're all designed to smooth the rough edges of your combat experience. Highlights include elite dungeon drops have a unified drop rate per clear. This includes changes to duos and trios chasing those Eldritch crossbow drops. Fighting Virago fight will be pacier and raking on reaction more consistent. Abilities have been updated including smoke tendrils, get ready for guaranteed critical hits. Boss fights can now be measured in milliseconds, time to snatch a new personal best by 0.6 seconds sound good check out the full list in patch notes so we'll, we'll get to the patch notes but let's just quickly like look at this a little bit the elite dungeon drops have a unified drop rate i think this means that um if you're in a duo let's say if it was one in 50 for a for a for a solo which i think it's one in 55 we'll say it was one in 50 you would go to a duo and i think it's going to be one in 100 which is the same drop rate which is cool because it just means you don't get punished for actually doing this in more than just a solo now so you still get two rolls on the table and it's a one in 100 rather than a one in the 50 i'm assuming that's what it means or you got a one in the 50 each basically maybe so let's uh let's let's just see yeah, let's get down to the next few things and we'll get through this um prime gaming drop we've got the new thing which is going to be seven days membership and the uh, the currency packs so that's pretty cool you've got prime gaming you lucky sort this month you get seven days of membership plus a currency pack stuffed with 35 treasure hunter keys and 200 rune coins very nice be sure to claim yours when it drops on march 15th so this isn't today guys if you're trying to claim this today it's not today it's tomorrow okay i know a lot of people like, see this and they go oh quick grab your prime thing it's tomorrow um you will be able to get this tomorrow not today but you can get some pretty good stuff with that. Okay, patch notes. This is going to be the big thing, right? This is where all the all of the uh, the changes are. And there's, there's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot to get through in this. So bear with, guys. We will get through this. And uh, I'll, I'll get you guys up to date. And if there's stuff that I don't understand, then I'm sure people will let me know in the comments. And they'll correct me. And I will pin stuff if it's, if it's a big fix and whatnot. And I'm sure we'll answer questions for people if I really have no idea. So, Ninja Strike, Boss Encounters, Virago, remove the delay at the end of each gap jump within the borehole, making the transition smoother. Out of the timer bar to Virago, showing charge time for the entry attack. This means you can um, use like vitality potions easier, I guess. You know when the damage is going to be rather than just a random thing. That's pretty cool. Uh, reduce the charge time of Virago's entry attack from 33 cycles, 19.8 seconds, to 20 cycles, 12 seconds. That means you just don't have to wait as long. Virago's entry attack now deals 70% of your max life points in normal mode and 90% in hard mode, as opposed to a fixed amount shared between players. This means you can now solo Virago, right? I think this is this is the big thing about soloing Virago. You don't have to uh, go in a group anymore because if you go in solo, it'll take 90% in hard mode and 70%, meaning you, you, you won't die getting in. The encounter will start even if a player is killed by Virago's entry attack. In solo encounters, players can now jump the gap in the first phase without needing Virago to, to be facing away from them. In phase two, the gravity field required in progress has been reduced from four to two. In phase two, the bring him down activity is not is now twice as fast. Increase the bleed damage from 150 to 250 in normal mode and from 250 to 400 in, normal, in hard mode to accommodate this change. So I'm assuming this is going to... Uh, slightly reduce the costs of um of seismics maybe and maybe mage gear we'll have to see uh, because if you can now solo him um i don't really know exactly what all the other changes mean because i don't do a lot of uh, virago but i'm assuming this should eventually even if it's only slightly bring the prices of seismics down which is of course a good thing because their prices of them is ridiculous so hopefully it does uh, i guess we'll have to see what happens with it it's interesting though it's cool that you can now solo virago i mean i might give it a shot right i might actually give it a try Okay, Raksha. Raksha will no longer change targets unexpectedly as it has been doing in rare cases. Yeah, that was annoying as hell, but that's that's fine. This will mostly stop Raksha from attacking the first player to attack it instead of targeting the player who began the encounter. Okay, so now it will actually... You, you don't have to wait for the person who started the encounter or who's who's in, like starting the actual fight. Um, you don't have to wait for them to attack first because that was kind of annoying, but that's, that's a cool fix. Update to the Rockfall damage area from 7... 
by seven to five by five to better fit the size of the visuals. So you, you'll take, you, you got like a little extra space. The rocks areas are smaller. So it's a nerf, that's a nerf. In phase four, various block tiles have been removed from the west pipes. Also in phase four, the shadow anima will now be absorbed more consistently when moving within close proximity. The shadow anima no longer has an absorb option to prevent accidental interactions. That's good because um, you will be running around and you're like, oh, I should have got that one. And you, you'd run to it and then you run back and then you run to it again and you run back. <laughs> that, well, at least I did. So that's, that's cool. They should hopefully absorb a lot a lot better now, a lot easier. But uh, other than that, it's just a nerf on the rocks for, for actually the damage is the same, but uh, it won't hit you as, as often probably if you're just running around like a crazy person and also uh just that's just a few fixes really okay queen black dragon reduce the length of the intro animation for players who have previously defeated the queen black dragon they've reduced the intro animation look at that imagine i wonder if araxi is gonna have the web change we're gonna have to find out that's freaking awesome next reduce the length of the intro animation good stuff jagex listening to the community this is so good to see so good to see they're paying massive attention to the stuff that's been bugging people i've seen them asking on twitter and stuff so like obviously they're paying attention and this this is great this sort of stuff is great it just saves time there's just no need for it, it just it's, it's good We've got Zuck, the portal at War's Retreat and the Max Guild can now be attuned to an alternate po uh, to an alternate point of arrival in front of Zuck. The fateful portal at War's Retreat has been updated with similar functionality. So you can now basically just go in front of Zuck rather than having to appear at the other end and like tra travel down. It's literally a couple of seconds saved, but it's pretty convenient. Elite Dungeons. The drop rate of unique items across the modes has been increased to give a unified drop rate per clear. Temple of Amnesia. Ancient scales will now drop from Seriu at 50% and 33% of the solo rates in duo and trio mode, respectively. These rates are per player. So I think that just makes... They've actually... They've made Elite Dungeons more worthwhile doing, right? That's what they've done. Because it's ED1, if you soloed... If you did ED1 in a duo or a trio, it was absolutely pointless. You could literally get zero scales for both of you. You could both get one scale or zero scales. or It, it, was, it was really, really bad. Whereas it sounds like they've made it better um, because you'll get 50% and 33% of the solo rates. That's good. That that sounds a lot better. I'm hoping that means that you can't you can't get zero now. I guess we'll have to find out though. Dragon King Laboratory. Dragon King Energy. Uh, Draconic Energy will now drop from the Blackstone Dragon at 50% and 30%. Same th as uh, ED1. So that's uh, going to make that more uh, better to duo, I guess, for the energies. Greater ability codices from Astralin, from the three three bosses, I can't pronounce the names at all. Um, solo is 110,000, becomes 120 and 10,000. Duo is 60 and 10,000. Trio is 40 and 10,000. Okay. The Shadow Wreath Eldritch crossover pieces from the Ambassador per player. Solo is 180 and 10,000. Duo uh, becomes 90 and 10,000. And then, yeah, so they have, this, this This is what they've done. They've, they've made the drop rates more even, uh, which means that they've not increased this one. This is the same. Solo is the same. Uh, but they have they have made these ones the same. So you don't get punished for going in a group is what I'm getting from this, I'm pretty sure. If you're in solo, you get 180 and 10,000. But in a duo, you get 90, which means you've got two 90s because there's two people making 180. Uh, and then the same here. So it's exactly the same. And now doing group content in ED3 is worth it. It's not, it's, it's the same across all of these. You can, oh, that's so good. This is like maybe my favorite update here. I mean, we have to get further down yet, but changing the elite dungeons to actually not be punished punished through growing in a group that's huge that is so freaking huge and it's so good to see abilities and spells smoke tendrils it's not a bug it's a feature if you've been using the smoke cloud for the staff of armadillo since the recent introduction you may have happened upon a hidden bonus they both work with smoke tendrils ability to guarantee a critical strike while this feature wasn't originally intended it's led to some interesting interactions that we rather like so we've made some changes to ensure critical strike functionality is part of the smoke tendrils ability itself rather than the bug damage is now calculated in a more standardized way it will no longer give adrenaline twice per hit when affected by the tsunami ability it will be affected by both the size and equilibrium invention perks it will give a critical strike on each hit reliably the damage inflicted on the player is now calculated separately from the damage dealt a critical strike that increases the damage into the top 95 percent can still occur through the biting invention perk and other bonuses the one that sticks out to me there is it will no longer give adrenaline twice per hit when affected by the tsunami ability um i always thought this was because your auto attack crit as well 
that the staff sent and you got adrenaline from that uh maybe it won't maybe this is going to reduce the amount of adrenaline you do get from tendrils which is kind of a nerf but it's still the same it's still going to be the same damage you'll just get less adrenaline like the, the ability itself will still do the exact same damage because you're still going to crit that many times um but if you're going to get less adrenaline that will be a little bit of something to work around you may not be able to do tendrils omni power you may have to do tendrils wild magic something else omni power uh, we'll just have to see what, what that actually does but i mean it, it, it doesn't matter like if, if it's if it's a nerf to magic a tiny bit then it is what it is magic's freaking strong as shit and it can take a nerf it doesn't matter too much um the ruby aurora spell now relies reliably applies the buff to other players i don't know exactly what that one does um in all honesty but uh, that's good if it re <laughs> reliably applies the buff i don't know how often that's used i don't think it's used at all the havoc snipe and dragon breath abilities can now be used to temporarily disable accuracy the doomed prayers this is uh the the, the barrows brother person yeah i think the impatient invention perk will now work with slice piercing shot rack and rack and ruin the surge escape and blade of dive abilities will no longer cause you to enter combat stance using these abilities while in combat stance will still maintain it use these abilities while adrenaline is draining will still cause you to enter combat stance okay cool so you can still stall adrenaline it means that you won't be put into combat so you can surge out of combat now and then log out straight away so if you, if you want, I don't know why you'd want to do that. Maybe if you wanted to surge uh, and open an interface that would normally not be allowed to be done in combat, uh, you can do that now. You don't have to wait for, for the surge to run out. But if you want to use surge to stall adrenaline, you still can. So that's good. Herblore bombs increased the max throw range to 10 tiles, updated the throw option to use on an active target, and improve the use functionality so you can actually throw these now from your action bar as well, I think, um, from, from the clicks as well, I think, and you can target the actual target so you don't have to like lead um but i think in situations where you can't target things that are untargetable i think you still have to use the way that we used to do it uh, but we'll have to just check that one out i think that's how it works i'm not 100 sure when using the backpack you can now target ground coordinates the bombs can now be thrown at an npc more consistently which notably fixes issues with large bosses that's surrounded by blocking like raksha and, and estella and whatever when dragging a bomb to the bar you'll be able to choose the interaction mode you wish to use this will allow you to use the keybinds for the throw and use options general boss kill times have been updated to include milliseconds so that is like the thing they mentioned earlier about being able to get faster personal records added a new option in the settings to toggle precise adrenaline value which shows decimal values for adrenaline if necessary this can be found on the settings combat action bar and action bar so you can get a precise adrenaline value which shows decimals does that matter i think that only matters in situations where you were maybe one percent off of using an ability um say for example at Carapac and you had the time warp sometimes you can get tsunami off sometimes you can't and i think that's because adrenaline stack so if you had like 15.9 percent and then you gained maybe it's good i don't know exactly increase the size of various wards chests elite dungeon chests from 32 to 48 yes <laughs> Yes, Jagex. Look at the big. Oh, that is so good. You couldn't do a trilogy and get every single item. You just couldn't. So the, now I assume you can. So those loot chests are at 48 now. That's good. Add the buff bar icon that displays the active ammunition in the player's quiver. If the quiver is empty, only an image of the quiver itself will show. When saving and loading a preset with exact matching enabled, the contents of a quiver will now be respected. The ancient elven ritual shard cooldown now resets while using the upgraded wars altar within wars retreat. Training dummies at Wars Retreat now have 10k damage cap and a 12k damage cap for a critical hit. Introduce the dragon, undead, and demon training dummies to the dispenser at Wars Retreat. I wonder what. Ah, oh, so you can test with like the, the sigil and stuff. That's cool. That's actually really cool. You can you can test out your, your sigils uh, and your perks and whatnot and see how much you can hit on that stuff. Um, that, that's really cool. Remove the question mark text from the Liberation of Mazcav boss interface. The insane Reaper achievement now displays requirements to show which collection logs the player has completed so that they can better track their progress. NPC health bars now make use of commerce separators when displaying health values over 1,000. Other, an early bird bonus was introduced with the new Abyssal Slayer creatures, giving players a higher chance to receive the Abyssal creatures as a Slayer task. And it's now been two weeks since the release, the bonus has been removed. Boss, Slayer, and Treasure Trail collection log achievements are no longer marked as hidden in the achievements interface. Updated the requirements description for the 
Kandarian Monastery Teleport and the Mana Farm Teleport Spells. The fourth window option in the seed bag now withdraws the correct amount of seeds based on the amount specified in the bank window. A pop-up will now appear whenever a new item for a collection log is obtained. This can be toggled within settings, interfaces, information windows. Soul rune production has been increased to give triple the amount of runes per change per charge than previously. XP remains unaffected. The Trollheim teleport spell has been updated to better discern it from the Tavli teleport. A Tetra Compass location in, in, to, in that place has been moved for better ease of access. The render distance of players and NPCs in the wilderness has been increased to match the rest of the world. The restriction was originally introduced to match the Java client, which has been, since been uh, deprecated. The legacy hit splats can now be selected for all miscellaneous hit splats, e.g. Po uh, poison, heal, soul split. Okay, so you can change the, the size of them to the smaller ones for, for poison and stuff now as well. The, the tab key can now be used as a custom keybind. Yes! What? Wait. We use that already for replying to messages, right? But you can set that to something else. The tab key being able to be rebound is freaking awesome. As a result of this, the reply message feature can now be bound to an alternate non-printable key. That's good. That's freaking awesome. I'll actually change that and use the tab key. The tab key is so good. Maybe target cycle. That's what I'm used to it in most games. Um, that's that's freaking cool. I like that. Removed coral hiding behind a signpost in Ardome. Bladed dive ability now resets its cooldown after killing the living rock strikers and living rock protectors. Movement no longer stalls while using the loved up rest animation. Equipping a Slayer Helm or Mask after an NPC dies but before the drop appears will no longer double the drop without progression to killing. This um, this was something with, uh, what was it called? The the Dagonoth Rex things. You could like get double loot at Dagonoths with, with this. Um, so that's what that, that's that fixed. Whetstone can now be used to repair fleeting boots. Cosmetics uh, are no longer forcibly changed when entering a sinkhole. The Blast Fusion Hammer can no longer be equipped in the main hand. Players can no longer attempt to recolor the biscuit pet. Fix an issue with uh, pickup sticks referring to an incorrect location during familiarization. Fix an issue with Glacite and Art Glacial's arms HP resetting during an encounter. Can you imagine? What? Okay. Fix an issue where reprisal couldn't be activated without a target uh, and with the ability queue turned on. Fix an issue with magic notepaper not noting the larger sandstone blocks. Fix an issue where weapons on the player's back would bounce while wearing the Cottontail Knight chestplate. Defense pylons can no longer attack players in the boss arena. Oh, that's good. That's good. They've reduced the range of the defense pylons, which is at um, Seryu, because they used to attack you halfway down into the arena, which was a little bit funny, um, but they've, they've fixed that now. The Xavier pet's green coloring is now consistent when overriding legendary pets when summoned by itself. Okay, we're not going to bother with the community thing because this is a long video uh, and, and patch notes don't really need to be this long. There's some amazing stuff in here though. The changes to all the bosses, the ED, uh, the, the reduced times and stuff, the elite dungeons, uh, everything. I'm so happy about the elite dungeons. You can now take people to duos and trios and, and not feel like you're being punished for it. Like, it's so good. You were, People were always hesitant to like, take a learner to ed3 because you would get to the end and it would be you know that you're not going to get a drop chances are because your drop rate so terrible whereas now it's the same and it it's just it's just something that i always confused me i was literally going to make a video on this in the past saying about how you just get punished for doing these in a, in a in a group so it just doesn't make sense the dungeons there should be group content or at least you should have the option to do it in a group so this is huge for me um otherwise jagex have done some amazing stuff Last week, barely having any content is um, is paid off. Look at all this stuff they've done. They've done so much. It's so good. Uh, Solo Virago maybe coming up soon. We'll have to see. Otherwise, guys, I'm going to end this video because there is so much stuff in here. It's a long-ass video, and uh, hopefully you did get some use out of it. If you did, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys.